Oh, make a note that if you are making a cardigan, then rather than starting at the back seam, the back sleeve seam like I did, you're going to be starting in the center front because your body has been knit flat. So what you will do is knit across the first half of the body stitches and then do as the instructions do. Eight stitches onto waist yarn from each piece as you work around until you reach the end of your row. Uh, and I can clarify that too. So for the first set of calculations in this lesson, we're going to work backwards. Uh, we're gonna start with the measurement on your schematic that's labeled K. This is the width across the back neck. The first thing you wanna do is multiply K by S, your stitch gauge, to find out how many stitches you're gonna leave across the back neck of your sweater. Uh, and then you're gonna obviously have to round it up or down to the nearest whole number. Um, there, you're gonna be doing a little, a good bit of rounding in this part. So remember, if you want a snugger neckline instead of a looser one, round down. If you want a looser one as opposed to a snugger one, round up. It's not gonna make that much of a difference, but it makes me feel good to know that I'm doing that. So. I had 29.685 for K times S, and I decided to round down to 28, because I like even numbers, and I would like to bring in the back of my neck more than I want it to be loose, since I'm doing a turtleneck. Now, you're gonna count the number of stitches, unless you can do it with arithmetic, along the back of your sweater, so that's between these two sets of markers. Uh, on my piece, that's 69 stitches, so that number is three. And then you'll subtract 3, which is 69, minus 2, which is 28, gives me 41 stitches. And if we round this to the nearest even number, I did 42. Uh, that is the number of stitches that I'm going to have to decrease out of my back to get the back neck measurement I want. And conveniently, it's also the number of decrease rounds that I'm going to be working. Um, which we'll get to later, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to remember this number, which is why I drew this happy sun around it, because I know I'm gonna be able to find it easily when I go back to it in a few steps. Um, we're gonna do one more piece of subtraction. This number, this fancy number four, take it away from three, which is what you're starting with, and that will tell you the number of actual number of stitches you'll have on your back, the back neck of your sweater. Remember when I said we're rounding because we're not gonna be able to be totally precise about this? This is the number that it's actually gonna turn out to be. So at this point, if you feel this is too far off from the number you wanted, you might need to adjust, either change 2A, well, adjust by changing this number, 2A, either rounding it up instead of down or just adding a couple of stitches to it. Uh, but I'm very happy with 27 for the number of my back neck stitches, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, our next step is to look at the intended depth of the yoke. Um, this is indicated by the letter J on the schematic, and I want to point out that J, which was, it looks like a diagonal line here, should actually have been a vertical line. So you want to make that adjustment on your schematic. There's J. So you're measuring from the armpit straight up a column of stitches to the highest point on the back neck of the sweater. Uh, in my case, that number J was 7.2 inches. And I'm going to multiply that by R, my row gauge, to find out how many rows I want the entire yoke of the sweater to be. And I got this number 49.5. And again, I'm going to have to round that to the nearest whole number. This one doesn't have to be even, so that's gonna be 50 rows for my entire yoke. Now I'm gonna take my fancy number four, which I had highlighted and was so excited about, 42. I'm gonna subtract that from the total yoke stitches. So 50 minus 42 gives me eight rounds. And this is the number of rounds that I'll work plain before I start the yoke shaping. And by work plain, since this is a stockinette sweater, I mean plain stockinette stitch. Um, if you're working a different stitch pattern, like some ribbing in your sweater, it just means work these rows plain without any patterning, with the same pattern as the rest of the sweater, without any decreases or increases um, for the sleeves. 
I'm not going to start that just yet, though. Uh, the, before we start actually working the yoke, we have to plan out our necklines. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky to knit because the yoke shaping through the shoulders and the neckline shaping are going to be worked for at least part of this at the same time. Uh, so that means we're going to plan out the yoke exactly as it says in the spread in our worksheet. You're going to plan out the neckline exactly as it says in the worksheet, and then you're going to do both at the same time, which requires a little bit of on your toes knitting. But I know that all of you can do it. Um, once we get to the shaping and the yoke, it's worked very simply. You work one decrease round, followed by one plain round, and then repeat until our fancy number of rounds have been worked in total. So that means I would, this is a two round repeat, so I would repeat it 21 times to get my 42 rounds. Um, and we'll, we'll do that when we get to it. <laughs> 